Welcome, everybody, and a very special welcome to our YouTube family, also to the readers and promoters of the Curious Diary and the patrons of God's Cottage. I remember you and your intentions in Mass every morning. My sincere thanks to those who remember me in prayer, sometimes I need it, and also to those who give the videos the thumbs up and put the comments underneath. Deeply appreciated. I will dedicate this video to those who live alone, especially the elderly, and especially those who are in any way frail or sick who live alone. It can be challenging at times, as I discovered during the week. On Monday, St. Stephen's Day, I felt a heavy cold coming on. That's not new. I used to get colds every year. And I was confident that I would be over it in a couple of days. I had arranged for a person to come in to assist me with one of my machines on Tuesday. But I postponed that till Friday in the confident expectation that by Thursday or Friday, I would be absolutely flying. But on Tuesday, I realised I wasn't really flying. The last time I felt so sick was at least 40 years ago when I got the measles as a young adult. Perhaps the reason that whatever bug I got hit me so hard and I tested negative for COVID, I don't have COVID, but whatever reason it hit me so hard is that for the last couple of years we have been shielded from all such bugs. One of the unforeseen consequences of the lockdowns is that we just were not exposed to the flu and were not exposed to these other flu-like viruses for the last couple of years. And as a result, our immune system had effectively lapsed. Just like our immunity to COVID uh, gets weaker with time, so too, with two or three years since we were exposed to these other bugs, our immune system had effectively collapsed. And that's the only explanation that I can think of for why on this occasion I ended up sicker than I have ever been for 40 years. And that, by the way, is one, is one of the reasons why there are excess deaths at the present time. More deaths than one would reasonably expect. People just were not exposed to all these bugs for a couple of years due to the lockdowns and the wearing of the masks and all the rest of it. And as a result, our immune system got weakened. Then on Tuesday night, I had what could be termed a bad night. Every time, just as I'd go fall asleep, something would happen, the throat would tickle, our uh, chest would uh, become inflamed or even my inner ear started to tickle and so I was up and down all night and it was literally only when it came to eight o'clock in the morning when I was due to get up that I began to feel truly sleepy. So eventually I dragged myself out of bed. I normally have prayer time in the morning from nine to mass at half nine. I'm afraid on Wednesday morning by the time I managed to shave myself and mooch around, there was no time left for praying the office. And eventually I dragged myself into the mass room with just minutes to go before mass. Thank God to be able to have mass. Thank God for the few people who come in for the mass. But on Wednesday morning, it was a real struggle, a struggle to stand up a struggle to speak, a struggle to read. And by the time Mass was over, I had truly exhausted all my strength. I didn't even have the strength to hang up the alb. I just let fall on a chair. And I was still very sleepy. I had been awake all night, and now I was absolutely sleepy. Having had a bite to eat, I went back to bed and was in it for a couple of hours. Then I struggled down and I managed to wash a couple of spuds and thankfully I had already carrots cooked and I threw on a piece of breeded fish which I normally, normally I don't have meat on a Wednesday but I just put on anyway, hope I've given, I've given myself extra strength 
and as soon as I had had my dinner, I headed back to bed and slept for another four hours. And then I struggled up, struggled down, had the leftover spud from lunchtime and moseyed around for a couple of hours. Challenging. I felt like putting on the fire, but there was no way I had the strength to put, consider putting on the fire. Eventually, having prayed my office, watched YouTube for a while, I headed back up, up the stairs. And even climbing the stairs had become an ordeal. Up until nine months ago, I was capable of going for a three to four hour walk in the Wicklow Hills. Now, uh, this week, I didn't have the strength to climb the stairs. So having reached the top of the stairs, I had to sit down for a while. Then to change my clothes for getting into bed. And it is unbelievable how difficult it can become for a sick person to do even the simplest things. When it came to unbuttoning my trousers, I just could not do it. The trousers had been on the tight side, one button is a little bit tight, and there was no way I could get it out through the hole. I, I looked at the scissors and was tempted to take the scissors to it, but eventually, after a struggle, I managed to get it open. And then there was the putting on of my garments for the bed. And with, with the condition of my chest, I always need extra garments in bed at night time because of my chest. And at a time like this, with my chest so full of whatever infection is there, I needed a, a double amount. But do you think I could get my arm into the sleeves of the different items? I tried and I tried and it became an impossibility. Eventually, I had to give up. After 25 minutes struggle, I ended up giving up without succeeding. And then there was the question of the bed. The previous night I had been up, down, up, down, up, down. Then in the morning I had been back in it, in the afternoon I had been back in it. And it was in an atrocious condition. It was most uncomfortable. But do you think I had the strength to make it? There was no way I had the strength to consider making the bed. So the only thing I could do was lie into the bed without having completed the putting on of my nighttime clothes and without having made uh, the bed and to, to hope that after an hour or so that the paracetamol would have taken effect and I would find the strength to be able to get up to complete those tasks. When I got into the bed, I heard something dropping. I realized that I must have left down my glasses on top of the bed while I was struggling with the garments. I reckoned that when I get up, I'd make sure to find them. And fair enough, after approximately an hour, the headache was gone, paracetamol probably working, and I began to feel a little bit of strength back in myself. So I got up to complete the task of putting on my nighttime clothes and to make the bed. And guess what I did? I walked on the glasses. Thanks be to God, I had a second pair identical. But eventually, having succeeded in putting on my nighttime clothes, having succeeded in making the bed, I got back into it. And as I always do, always put on a CD of sections of the New Testament. And it's amazing how often the Lord is able to speak to them into the situation I am facing. And sometimes it, it just plays there and goes totally over my head and I hear nothing. But on Wednesday night, one passage really came alive as it played in the background. St. Paul. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, fa the Father of compassion and the God of all comforts, who comforts us in all our troubles, in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. So we receive the comfort from God, then we can bring the comfort to others. He continues, For just as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, 
so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which accomplishes in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we experience. That passage really spoke to my heart on Wednesday night. God saying to me, Look, in all your troubles, I am with you. Even when you feel totally alone, even when you feel sick, I am with you. I can bring blessing out of everything. I will bring blessing out of this affliction you are going through. And so to anyone out there who is alone, especially anybody out there who is feeling miserable or sick and alone, I say to you, Jesus loves you. Jesus is with you. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. Ask him to give you strength. He is with you. Though I must admit on Wednesday night, I did not have the strength to cry out to him. Praise God, he still found a way to minister to me through that CD. I just did not have the strength to cry out to him. But whatever situation you're in, if you're sick and miserable, God is with you and God loves you. Tomorrow, please God, I hope to be in God's cottage. Okay, I've arranged to get a lift to God's cottage tomorrow because I just don't have the strength yet for driving the car. I don't even have the strength for going up the stairs. I have to sit down every time I go up it. But tomorrow, my team in God's Cottage, tomorrow, New Year's Day, my team in God's Cottage is Jesus desires to work a miracle through you in 2023. May you have the grace to experience that. Lord, I call forth your blessing upon those who are sick. I thank you, Lord, that you are with them. I thank you, Lord, that right now, that you are right there in the room with the person who is sick. And that right now you're in the room with the person who is feeling alone. And that right now that you're in the room with the first person who is feeling desperate. And I thank you, Lord, you love each of us. And I pray, Lord, for the power of your blessing to come upon the person who most needs it. For the power of your blessing to come upon the person who most needs it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, and thank you.